Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, I'm very thankful to God uh, for this other another opportunity uh, to be able to um, to share in His Word. Um, as you remember, we're going through uh, the basics, um, and so let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We thank you, Father, for a moment as such. We invite your presence, the presence of the Holy Spirit, to be upon us, to lead us, to guide us as we learn from you, Jehovah. Lord, I give you my mind, I give you my heart, I give you my soul, and I pray, Father, for the listener, that, Lord Jesus Christ, you may touch them, whatever they are right now. Fire of the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Father, for your peace to surround them. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, I'm really thankful that you have, you've been able, if you've been um, uh, continuing to catch up with the lessons as we've been going through um, the basics, um, we've started with the Word, we talked about God, we talked about man and sa Satan, um, and so today we're going to go about, talk about, um, uh, we're going to talk about the cross. Um, and so the basics really, these are things, not necessarily, I, it's not right for me to say these are things you sh so you're supposed to already know. Uh, but I believe that these are things that you need to know. Um, that very instrumental, very uh, important um, that we learn and know these things. Uh, praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Um, so today I want us to learn about um, um, the cross. Um, uh, there are many things that people talk about, about the cross, um, I've, I've seen people use it for many things, um, uh, even musicians, hip-hop artists, um, uh, in the past, uh, when I used to watch those things, those music, uh, they would put on a chain with a cross on, on it, or people have tattoos with a cross on it, um, but also there's a certain religions that wear the cross and not only do they have a cross, they also have um, something that is supposed to look like Jesus that is still nailed on the cross. Now as believers, we don't believe on a cross. We don't believe in a cross that has an image of Jesus on it uh, because Jesus left that cross. That cross is empty, empty. Jesus left that cross. He, he is in heaven even right now as I'm speaking. Praise God, and that's something we're also going to talk about later on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. So, today we're going to talk about the cross. Um, uh, you know, what is the cross? I mean, yeah, we've heard about the Word, we've talked about God, we've talked about man and Satan. Now, what what is this about the cross? What do I need to know about the cross? Um, what is the purpose of the cross? Why is it a big deal? Um, you know, and, and, and some people don't even believe that really that really took place. Uh, did, the, did, the, did the cross uh, really take place? Now, when we go into history, uh, when we talk about historical, um, even for those who don't believe that Jesus is the Son of God, uh, there is um, a historical proof that there was a man named Jesus. Uh, there's a historical proof that during his time, uh, the criminals used to be put on the tree on on the cross. They used to be um, put on the um, they be they be punished on the cross. So, historically speaking, um, this was a practice of the Roman uh, Empire. The Roman Empire was uh, had become in charge of um, of a very uh, very big area, uh, and Israel was one of those people who are under the uh, the rule of the Roman Empire. So uh, the Roman Empire, uh, the way they would punish uh, criminals, and uh, it was it was it was by uh, death, uh, they'll put them on the cross. So uh, let's move on. Let's just leave the, the historical part about the cross. Let's talk about the cross in itself. Uh, let's look at Romans, Romans chapter 1, verse 16. Um, and this is very, uh, very key right here. Um, as a believer, for us as believer, this is this is what we need to think and know about the cross. Uh, Romans one one uh, Romans one uh, sixteen. It says this. 
um, for I am not ashamed of the good news about Christ. It is the power of God's work, saving everyone who believes, uh, the Jews first and also the Gentiles. I'm not ashamed of the I'm not ashamed of the of, of, of the of this good news. Now, see, the good news is the cross. Without the cross, there's no new good news. Uh, I mean, this the cross is everything right here. Uh, uh, and 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 some people they might try they try to avoid this idea of the cross and try to talk about Jesus. Listen, you can never talk about Jesus without talking about the cross. The purpose that Jesus came to this world it was the cross. When we read in the book, um, when you go in, in John, when Jesus is going out to pray, um, he comes and prays to the Father, and he says, "Father." Um, if it is your will, let this cup pass me. Let this cup pass me. Um, he 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 knows what is yet to come, what is about to take place. Um, and and not just in in the, in the book of John, but in any of the gospels, you find this same prayer that Jesus is praying. Is saying, Father, um, if it is your will, uh, I pray that this cup may pass me. That this cup may pass me. Because he knows what is about to take place. And, and because of that, um, you know, the Bible said that his heart was troubled. Um, and and, and not, not only was his heart troubled, but he was also, you know, when he went to pray, he was praying and, and the blood was coming. It was, it was, it was drifting. It was drifting. Um, let's read in the book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 36. Um, it says that Jesus went with them, this is the disciples, to the olive, olive grove uh, called Gethsemane. And he said, sit here while I go over there to pray. Um, he took Peter and Zebedee's son, two sons, that is James and John, and he became anguish and distress. He became anguish and distress. I mean, Jesus has done all the miracles. He's risen people back to life. He's healed the sick. He's healed the cripple. You know, but now the very purpose, the very reason that he came, which is the cross, is about to take place. And this moment is so hard for him. He's putting his 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 closest friends, that is Peter, John, and James. He's getting them close to, to himself. He's come, he goes with them to Gethsemane and he puts them in there. He says, sit here while I go over there to pray, you know. So he, he brings them, but then he had to leave them to go and find time by himself with God because now is the time that he wants to talk to the Father because whatever that is about to happen is going to be very difficult. It's going to be very hard. And he says, my Father, that's verse 39, if it is possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. Yes, I want your will to be done, not mine. See, God, when Jesus is praying to the Father, he's saying, God, if it is possible, let this cup pass. Let this cup pass because he knows the suffering. He knows the pain that he's about to endure. And so he's asking God the Father, say, Father, I pray that this cup may pass, may pass, may pass. But guess what? But he doesn't finish there. But he says, but let your will be done. Let your will be done. And we all know what the will of the Father is. The will of the Father is for Christ to die on that tree. Is for the Christ to die on the cross. Now Jesus is full of love. He's full of love. He, he came to this world for that purpose. But he needs, at this moment, he just wants to get closer and closer. He's always been close to the Father. But he wants to feel the Father's love. He wants to feel the, the Father's love. Because he knows what's going to happen when he's on the cross. Um, and so... Um, when you read verse 42, he comes back to the prayer for the second time. He says, uh, and then he repeats the same prayer. He says, Father, if this cup cannot be taken away unless I drink it to you, your will be done. I drink it. Your will be done. Your will be done. And so when Jesus is talking about the cup, he's talking about the cross. He's talking about the suffering. He's talking about the pain that he's about to go through right now. And so he's like, Father, Father, Father. If it is your will, let if if uh, you say, Father, let this cup pass. But if it's your will, let your will be done. Let your will be done. If I must take this cup, let your will be done. Let your will be done. He's praying for power. He's praying for strength. And as you look in one of the other gospels, he's talking about Jesus at this moment. You know, he's bleeding. He's 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 sweating. He's sweating. Um, and his sweat that is coming off, it's a sweat of 
um, it's a sweat of blood that is is coming off of him. That is how 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 he um, this is how powerful this moment is 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 going at this moment. And so, uh, so what do we say about this? You know, what do we say about this? What do we say about the cross? Did it really happen? Did it really take place? It depends where you stand. See, the message of the cross, if anybody, if we're talking about Jesus and, and then the idea of taking sin by being on the cross, it sounds very stupid. It sounds very foolish. It sounds very crazy. How can somebody die on the cross and take the sin of people? And so that's why it is very important for us to understand the message of the, of the cross. Why is the cross important? Let's read in the book of, uh, uh, in the book of, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 18. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 18. This is what it says. It says the message of the cross is foolish to those who are headed to destruction for destruction. But we who are being saved know it the we know it is the very powerful is the very power of God. Praise praise the Lord. Now listen, for us who are believers, for us who are saved, when we hear the message of the cross, we know that that is the power of God. But for the people who are perishing, for the people who are who are who are rebellious, who don't want to know and hear anything about God, to them when they hear anything about the cross, to them it's foolish, it's stupid, it's meaningless. He has no power, he has nothing to them. But guess what? There's power in the cross of Jesus. There's power in the cross of Jesus. There's power in the cross of Jesus. That Jesus who was put on that cross, who was hung on the cross, he hung there in order to bring man back to God. He hung there in order to bring us back to the Father. Praise Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Um, as we were learning last time about man and Satan, we learned that sin entered the world. And as sin entered the world, God, uh, he, he had already planned that Jesus Christ was going to come on earth. When he said to the devil that, the, that the, uh, the offspring of the woman will crush your head and you will sting his heel. That is God the Father talking about Jesus coming. Talking about that Jesus is going to come and he's going to crush. He's going to crush the head of the devil. That he's going to crush the head of the serpent. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, the cross. The reason the cross is very important is because that is the only way that, um, that we can be brought back to God. See, when the devil came and lied to the to Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve gave in to the to the words of the devil. And when they gave in to the words of the devil, they 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 allowed the devil to take dominion over the earth. But that was not but the plan of God. The plan of God was that man will take will rule the earth. Man will rule this world. Man will be uh, in charge. So the devil took possession he took charge of the earth evil came in creeping in and then you know man's eyes the human race our eyes were open and so we became very um aware of of good and evil and unfortunately from that on we became slaves hallelujah we became slaves slaves to sin we became slave to sin that death entered the world through one man but the Bible tells me that life came to this world through one man. His name is Jesus Christ. It's through the cross that we receive the life that Christ has guaranteed us. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. See, when Jesus came on this earth, it was in order to restore back that relationship, that relationship that was broken in the beginning. See, when we sinned and, 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 and disobeyed God, there was a big separation. Yes, God was still manifesting and revealing himself throughout history. When you look in the Old Testament in, in, with the Israelites, he was there, he was there, he was there. But the relationship was still, it was not the way it was supposed to be. And and the, the, the people were still rebellious, still 
rebellious towards God. But God had a perfect plan. And this is why I love God. See, a lot of us, we are very busy blaming God for the sin in the world. While God himself has already given us uh, the, the, the antidote, which is the medicine. What is, which is, um, yes, we can, we, you can blame God for what has happened, but God has already taken care of everything. God is holy. Like I'm always saying, God is holy. God is just. God is powerful. God is graceful. God is, is he's all knowing. So listen to me. Stop blaming God. If you're listening to me and, 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 and you're not serious with God, you're just blaming God. I'm telling you that God has already made a way. God has already created a path. Jesus, when he came to this earth, he said, I am the way. I am the way to the Father. I am the way of, the, of truth and life. I am the way. He is the way. He is the way. He said, there's nobody else that can come to the Father but through me. So Jesus Christ, he already, he already said that he is here. He say in the book, in the Gospels, he said that I am here to do the will of my Father. I'm here to fulfill the will of my Father. I'm here to make... See, the, the reason that people didn't like Jesus is because he was obedient to the Father. See, he didn't come to please people. He didn't come to make people happy. He came to make God happy. He, make, he came to make father, the Father happy. And so he was obedient. The Bible said that Jesus humbled himself even to the, point of the, to the point of death on the cross, to the point of death. See, he came to bring people back to God. He came to bring people back to God. Let's look in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah uh, chapter 53. Isaiah 53, Isaiah 53, verse 5 and verse 6. Okay, so here we go. Isaiah 53 says this, uh, verse 5 to 6. But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. All of us, like a ship, have strayed away. We have left God, God's path to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the sin of us all. The sin of us all. When Jesus hung on the cross, he carried the sin of the whole world. See, when we look at this, we're just thinking about what's the big deal? See, we're only looking at the physical element of this, but in the spiritual element there's so many things that are taking place that we cannot comprehend not only that just imagine god himself god the son leaving his throne in heaven to come in this earth on this earth and take the flesh of human just imagine living his glory coming on earth taking the body and not just that to humble himself can you imagine he washed his disciples feet humbled himself into the point of death that he would hung on the tree. When he was being accused, he faced accusations, false accusations. They made up all these things. They hired people to come and say false things. He was slapped, he was mocked, he was whipped, he was, he was beaten. He was a beaten. He was beaten. And people were calling him names. And they're saying, crucify him. An innocent person. Somebody did nothing wrong. He did nothing wrong. He committed no crime. Jesus committed no crime. Yet they, they, take, they took him in order to be put on the cross. And while he was on the cross, and people are yelling, crucify him, crucify him. Jesus was carrying all the sin of the world was nailed on the cross was nailed on the cross all the sin of the world was nailed on the cross Jesus had to die for us to be saved we, there was so much full of, this, uh, of, 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 of evil in this world now See, the cross brings the relationship back with, with God. It also brings, um, um, not only does it bring relationship with God. Matter of fact, let's read in the book of uh, Revelations. Revelation chapter 5, verse 9 to 14. And I want us to really look at this. This is, um, 
this is after Jesus has already overcome death uh, on the cross. Uh, but he is in his glory at this moment, and this is what it's being said, uh, Revelations 5, 9, he says, And they sung a new song with the words, You are worthy to take the scroll and break its seal and open it. For you were slaughtered, and your blood has ransomed people for God, for every tribe and language and people of all nations, and you have caused them to become a kingdom of priests for our God, and they will reign on the earth. Then I look again and I heard the voice of thousands and millions of angels around the throne of the living beings and the elders and they sung in a mighty chorus. Worthy is the Lamb who was slaughtered to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessings. And then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and its sea. They sung blessed and honor and glory and power belong to the one sitting on the throne and the Lamb forever and ever. And the four living beings said, Amen. Amen. And the 24 elders fell down and worshipped the Lamb. Hallelujah. Listen, a lot of people are trying so hard to get to heaven. Many churches, many pastors, they're teaching people to do a lot of things. If you don't do this, you don't go to heaven. If you don't do this, to go, you don't go to heaven. You have to do this, you have to do that, you have to do... Hey, 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 listen. Let's talk about less about things that you have to do to go to heaven. What about the cross? What about the cross? What about the cross? See, I mean, if we're talking about people having to do work, people having to, you have to sing in the choir, you have to cover your hair, you have to wear a long skirt, you have to do this, this, and that, and that, and that, and that. There's so many rules and regulations. People are telling people, you must do this, you must do that, you must do this to go to heaven. If that's the case, then Jesus didn't have to come to this world. Jesus didn't have to die on the cross. See, when people start bringing all these rules and regulations telling you that you must do this, you can do this, you have to do this, you have to do this to go to heaven, they're binding you, they're bounding you, they're they really chaining you. It becomes, to me, I can say easily that that is witchcraft. It's a, it's, a, it's a stronghold. You're holding people down. And that is how people can become so religious. You can become so religious and still go burning hell because all your life was based on rules and never about the love and the sacrifice that Jesus has already offered on the cross. And yet, it's about rules and regulations and, and, and all those things. See, the rules and regulations, yeah, they're important, but listen, if you're truly saved and you're truly child of God, you will hate sin and you will live a life that honors God and you will live a life that, 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 that lifts up. See, the thing with rules and regulations, when people are bound in rules, what they do is they act religious, they just cover themselves up, but really deep inside themselves, there's never a transformation. See, there are people that cover themselves and they look all good. They have all their head covered. They have all the long clothes. They have long tissue whatever, you know, they're, 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 they're wearing, the, they're following all the church rules that are being put upon them. But once they leave the church, all this stuff, they take them all off because everything is all superficial. So there's never really a true transformation that has happened or taken place within their heart. So whatever they're doing, it's all pretending. This is hypocrisy. This is what the people in the Bible were doing. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, all these people, they like the outside appearance. That whenever they're walking around, they be notice that this person is holy this person is righteous see there are people that even will pray long prayers they'll pray long prayers they will quote the scriptures they will do all this and that they will follow all the rules but they forget about the cross they forget about the cross they're trying to achieve righteousness in their own strength in their own power while the word of god is clearly stating that jesus christ has already paid it on the cross it's already been done on the cross it's already been done on the cross jesus did it on the cross why why are you still bound with religion why are you bound with religion? Why are you be bound with religion? I want you to email me. Just write to me. Um, I have my email down here. Um, you know, because it's time for you to be set free and realize that the cross came to give you freedom, not to bound you, not to bound you. The cross did not come to bind us. The cross did not come to bind us. We have been set free. Praise the Lord. 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes, I understand the purpose of all the rules and the regulations. But most of them are man-made. Man comes up with ideas of things that they think that they will get us to heaven. And yet, eliminate the cross. The cross. Can you believe it? Somebody will say, I don't know if I die, I will go to heaven. How can you live a life not knowing that if you die, you're going to go to heaven? When Jesus already met, paid the price. See, again, we are busy blaming God for the things that have happened in this world. We are blaming God for the sin, for the uh, corruption, for the murder of, you know, and a lot of people, like I said, they're, they're, they're atheists, a lot of, but yet God has already made um, a way. He already made a way through Jesus Christ. Jesus, God himself came on this earth. He died on the cross and, 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 and so, so that we can be uh, brought back to him. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's look in the book of um, uh, Galatians chapter 3 verse 13. Galatians 3 chapter, uh, chapter 3 verse 13. And this is what it says. It says, um, But Christ has rescued us from the curse pronounced by the law. When, we, when he hung on the cross, he took upon himself the curse for our wrongdoing. For it is written in the scripture, Cursed is everyone who is hung on the tree. So listen, when you become religious and you try to earn salvation, by your own power, by being religious, and you abandon the cross, what the cross did, then what really what you're doing is you're you're under a curse. You're really under a curse. See, Jesus already took the curse for us. You don't have to be under the curse. You need to just abide and, and, and know that Jesus already paid it and believe in the power of the cross. Jesus didn't come to die on the cross just for fun. He didn't come to die on the cross and take a selfie and send it to heaven and say, hey, look, look, this is trending now. No, 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 no. The, Jesus was on a serious business. Jesus was on a serious business. The cross is the center of the whole universe. It's the center of, 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 the, of the human history. See, whenever we read the Old Testament, uh, when we were talking about the Word, see, the Old Testament is people looking forward. They're looking ahead. They're looking to the day that the cross is going to come because Jesus, with are prophesying about Jesus, they're prophesying about Messiah. Messiah is going to come. There's going to be a person that's going to come and take take the sin of the world. There's this person, the Messiah, the Messiah, that's going to bring people back to God. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. Now, in the New Testament, Jesus has already come. So now we're living in the New Testament period. And so now we're looking back. We're looking back at what Jesus already done on the cross. Jesus already done. He's already come. See, the Bible is saying that people are looking. The people in the Old Testament, they, they were yearning for this, for the day of the cross. They, they wish they were living in the day that we are living. This is the day of mercy, the day of grace, the day of the cross. That we are living under the, the moment of people where the people in the Old Testament wish they were part of. Hallelujah. But yet some of us, we are taking it for granted. See, back in the day, before the cross, people had to, there was the, the, they had to follow the law. They had to, to do a lot of stuff. But now we are free from the law and we are brought together by the power of the cross, by the power of the cross. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And so here, let's 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 read a little bit about this cross. Um, we're gonna look in one of the gospels, um, mainly Matthew, um, and just and just see what Jesus had to endure uh, with the cross. So. Uh, Matthew chapter 26. 
uh, verse 57. Then the people who had arrested Jesus led him to a home of Caiaphas, the high priest, where the teachers of religious law and the elders had gathered. Meanwhile, Peter followed him at a distance and came to the high priest's uh, courtyard. He went in and sat in with the guards and waited to see how it would all end. And I believe this is how uh, most people are with their lives. You know, they hear about this Jesus stuff, this Christian stuff, and they're just like, hmm. I'm just going to sit around and see how this all ends. Is, if, is, is this Jesus even real? Is this God even real? I'm just going to hang around and see if how all this... Listen, man, you don't have to sit around and see how this ends. Because if you're not in it, then you're going to be in the wrong place. You need to be part of it. You need to be part of it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, so let's continue in the book of... Uh, that, that very book, Matthew chapter 27, verse 11 says, um, Now Jesus was standing before Pilate, a Roman governor. Are you the king of Jews? The governor asked him. Jesus replied, You have said it. But then the leading priest and the elder made the accusations against him. Jesus remained silent. Don't you hear all these accusations, like these charges they are bringing against you? Pilate demanded. But Jesus made no response to any of the charges. Must, uh, much to the governor's surprise. Now, it was the governor's custom each year that the Passover celebration to release one of the prisoners to the crowd, anyone they wanted. This year, there was a notorious prisoner, a uh, man named Barabbas. As the crowd gathered be before Pilate's house they, uh, that morning, he asked them, Which one of do you want me to release to you? Barabbas! Uh, or, or, or Jesus, uh, who is called the Messiah. He knew very well. That the, that the religious leaders had arrested Jesus out of envy. Just then, as Pilate was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent him his message. Leave that innocent man alone. I suffered through a terrible nightmare about him last night. Meaning, meaning, meanwhile, the leading priest and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas to, release, to be released and for Jesus to be put to death. So the governor asked again, this is our last question. He's asking him again because the governor knows what's going on, but he's doing it because he wants to please people, of course. Um, his wife, it sounds like she had a nightmare because uh, when she was sleeping, she was she had a revelation that Jesus was innocent. He didn't do all. He didn't. He didn't do anything. But yet, um, the governor will not listen to what the wife's plea is because. Uh, he's in a hot seat right now. He has to do what these people are asking him to do. So meanwhile, the leading priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas to be released, for Jesus to be put to death. So the governor asked again, which of these two do you want me to release to you? The crowd shouted back, Barabbas! Pilate responded, then, what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? They shouted back, crucify him. Why? Pilate demanded. What crime has he be committed? But the mob roared even louder. Crucify him! Pilate saw that he wasn't getting anywhere and that a riot was developing. So he sent for a bowl of water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I'm innocent of this man's blood. The responsibility is yours. And all the people yelled back, We will take the responsibility for his death. We and our children. So Pilate released Barabbas to them. He ordered Jesus flogged with lip, um, to be flogged with a lead-tipped whip. Then turned him over to the Roman soldiers to be crucified. Wow! 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 Just, just, just imagine. You're being betrayed with your own friend. You're being um, denied by your own friends. You've been with them. They've seen things they've never seen their whole life. But yet, Jesus is left all alone. All alone. They're being accusing him for the wrong things, for the false things that he didn't do. But you know, in his mind, 